Hi, everybody. Welcome back to reInvent 2022. We're wrapping up four days. Well, one evening and three solid days wall-to-wall -wall of CUBE coverage. I'm Dave Vellante. John Furrier's birthday is today. He's on a plane to London to go see his nephew get married, his, his great sister Janet, awesome family, the Furriers, uh, spanning the, the globe. And, uh, and, and John, I know you wanted to be here. You were watching in Newark, or you were waiting to, uh, to get in the plane, so all the best to you. Happy birthday. One year, the Amazon PR people brought a cake out to celebrate John's birthday, because he's always here at AWS reInvent at his birthday. So I'm really pleased to have two really special guests, uh, former CUBE host, CUBE alum, great Wikibon contributor, Stu Miniman, now with Red Hat. Stu, good to see you again. Great to be here, Dave. Yeah, yeah I, I was here for that cake. Uh, the, the Twitterverse uh, was uh, really helping to celebrate John's birthday today, and uh, you know, always great to be here with you and, and with this you know, awesome event this week. And, fr and friend of the Cube, uh, uh, many time Cube, often Cube contributor, as he is a Cube analyst this week, as his own consultancy, Sarb G. Johal. Great to see you, thanks for coming on. Good to see you, Dave. Uh, good to see you, Stu. I'm always happy to participate in these discussions and um, um, I enjoy the discussions every time. So this is kind of th cool, because you know, usually the last day is a getaway day, and this is a getaway day, but this place is still packed. I mean, it's, I mean yeah, there's definitely, it it's up. definitely lighter. You can at least walk and not get slammed, but I, Subjeet, I'm going to start with you. I, I wanted to have you as the, the tail end here because you participated in the analyst sessions, you've been watching this event from, from the first moment, and now you've got four days of the Kool-Aid injection, but you're also talking to customers, developers, partners, the ecosystem. Where do you want to go? What's your big takeaways? I think big takeaway is that Amazon sort of innovation machine is chugging along. Uh, uh, they are, I, I was listening to some of the sessions when I was going to my room at nine. So they're filling the holes in some areas, but in some areas they're moving forward. There's a lot to fix still. It doesn't seem like that. It seems like we are done with the cloud or the innovation is done. Now we are building at the millisecond level, so where do you go next? There's a lot of room to grow on the storage side, on the network side, uh, the improvements we need. And, and also making sure that the software which is, you know, which fits the hardware, like there's specialized software, um, sorry, specialized hardware for certain software, you know? So there was a lot of talk around that, and I attended some of those sessions where I asked the questions around, like, we have a specialized database for each kind of workload, specialized uh, uh, processors, processors for each kind of workload. Yeah, the so Graviton session Graviton. you sat into. And yeah. actually, yeah, the, the, the one interesting, before I forget that, uh, um, observation was, uh, I asked that, like, why there are so many, so many databases, and the e I asked about the egress costs and all that stuff, can you, are you guys thinking about reducing that, you know? Um, the answer was no, egress cost is not a big, big sort of, uh, uh, um, showstopper for many of their customers, but but the from all that sort of little discussion with with the folks sitting who build these products over there was that the plethora of choice is given to the customers to to make them feel that there's no vendor lock-in. So if you are using some open source, you know, um, soft software, it can be on the you know platform side or can be database side. You have database side. You have that option at AWS. So this is there, there's a lot there because I always thought that, that that AWS is the mother of all lock-ins, but it's got an ecosystem, no, and we're going to talk yeah, about exactly. that. Exactly, we'll talk about Stu, that. Stu, what's it. working within AWS when you talk to customers, and where are the challenges? Yeah, I, I got to comment on, on open source, Dave. Yeah, of absolutely. course, there because <laughs> I mean, look, we criticized Amazon for years about their lack of contribution. They've gotten better. They're doing more in open source, but is Amazon the mother of all lock-ins? Many times, absolutely. There's certain people inside Amazon uh, saying, you know, many of us talk cloud native. They're like, well, let's do Amazon native, which means you're like, full stack is things from Amazon and do things the way that we want to do things. And, you know, I talk to a lot of customers, they use more than one cloud, Dave, and therefore certain things, absolutely, I want to leverage the innovation that uh, Amazon has brought. I do think we're past building all the main building blocks. In many ways, we are like in day two. Yes, Amazon is 
fanatically customer focused and will always stay that way, but you know, there wasn't anything that jumped out at me last year or this year that was like, wow, new category, whole new way of thinking about something. Werner Vogels last year, Dave, said, you know, we have over 200 services. And if we listened to you, the customer, we'd have over 2,000. His session this week actually got some great buzz from my friends yeah. in the serverless ecosystem. They love some of the things tying together. We're using data, the next flywheel that we're going to see for the next 10 years. Amazon's at the center of the cloud ecosystem in the IT world, so you know, there's a lot of good things here, and to your point, Dave, the ecosystem, one of the things I always look at is, you know, was there a booth that they're all going to be crying in their beer after Amazon made an announcement? There was not a tech vendor that I saw this week that was like, oh gosh, there was an announcement and all of a sudden our business is gone. Where I did hear some rumbling is Amazon might be the next GSI to really move forward, and we've seen all the GSIs pushing really deep into supporting the cloud, bringing workloads to the cloud, and there's a little bit of rumbling as to that balance between what Amazon will do and, and their, uh, their go-to-market partners. So a couple things, so I think, I think we all agree that a lot of the, the announcements here today were taping seams, right, I call it. And, and as it relates to the mother of all lock-in, the reason why I say that, it's, it's obviously very much a pejorative, Compare Oracle, a company you know really well, with Amazon's lock-in. Amazon's lock-in is about bringing this ecosystem together so that you actually have choice within the, the house. So you don't have to leave, you know, the, there's, a, there's a lot to eat at the table. Yeah. You look at Oracle's ecosystem, it's like, eh. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Oracle is Oracle's ecosystem. So, so that is how I think they do lock in customers well, by incenting them not to leave because there's so much choice. Yeah, Dave, Dave, I agree with you a thousand percent. I mean, heck, I'm here, I'm a, I'm a good partner of AWS and all of the partners here want to be successful with Amazon and Amazon is open to that. It's not our way or get out, which Oracle tries. How much do you extract from the overall IT budget, you know? Are you a YouTube where you give the people that help you create a large sum of the money? YouTube hasn't been all that profitable. Amazon, I think, is doing a good balance of the ecosystem makes money. You know, we used to talk, Dave, about you know, how much dollars does VMware, VMware. make versus there. Um, I think you know, Amazon is a much bigger you know, VMware 2.0. We used to think, talk about all the time, that, that VMware, for every dollar spent on VMware licenses, 15 or 12 or 20 were spent in the ecosystem. I, I would think the ratio is even higher here, Sarbjeet. And, and an Oracle, I would say it's, I don't know. Yeah, actually, one to point five, maybe. I don't know. But go I ahead. I want to pick on your, your discussion about the, the, the ecosystem. The the partner ecosystem is so like, it's it's robust, strong because it's wider. I was I was not saying that there's no lock-in with with Amazon, right? AWS. There is lock-in. There's lock-in with everything. There's lock-in with open source as well. But sure. but but the, the point is that they're, they're, the the circle is so big. You don't feel like locked in but they're playing smart as well. They're bringing in the, the software, the, the platforms from the open source, they're picking up those packages and say, we'll bring it in and cater that to you through AWS, make it better, perform better, and also throw in their custom chips on top of that. Say, hey, this MySQL runs better here. So like, what do you do? I said, oh, Oracle, because it's Oracle's product, if you will, right? So they are, I think they're firing on all cylinders from their go-to-market strategy, from their engineering, and they listen to they are listening to customers uh, like very closely, and that has sort of side effects as well. The listening to customers creates a sprawl of services. They have so many services, and I criticized them last year for calling everything a new service. I said, don't call it a new service. It's a feature of an existing service. Sure, a lot you know, of features. A lot announced. of features. Is, yeah. is egress are egress costs a real problem, or is it just? the, the on-prem guys picking at the, the scab. I mean, what do you hear from customers? So, I, I mean, Dave, you know, I, I, I look at what Corey Quinn talks about all the time, and Amazon charges on that are more expensive than any other cloud, the cloud providers, and partly because Amazon is, you know, probably not a word they'd use, they are dominant when it comes to the infrastructure space, and therefore, they do want to make can. it a little bit harder uh, to do that. They can get away with it um, because um, yeah, you know, we've seen some of the cloud providers have special partnerships where you can actually, you know, leave and you're not going to be charged. And Amazon, they've been a little bit more flexible, but absolutely, yeah. I've heard customers say that they wish Cloud they were Flare a bit. was hammering yeah. them on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely. some good tongue-in-cheek stuff. What else you got? 
Lay yeah. it on us. Bring the analysis. <laughs> so do, do our players, I, 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 okay, this year I think the focus was on the offside. Like it's, it's shifting gradually. This was more focus on offside. There, there was less talk of, of developers from the main stage, from from all sort of quadrants, if you will, from all keynotes, right? So uh, even Werner this morning, he had a little bit for. He, depth, he right? was talking, but he he was talk. He his job is to rally up the builders, right? Yeah. yeah so he right. talks for the go build, right? His, pi his pipes, I thought, was kind of cool. <laughs> then I said, like, making hey. glue easier. I thought that was good. You know, I know some folks no, no, use that. I I couldn't attend the whole session, but but I heard in between, right? Yeah. So it, it is really adopt or die. You know, the, I am cloud pro for last you know ten years. And I think it's the best model for uh, technology consumption, right? Um, because of economies of scale, but more importantly, because of division of labor, because of specialization, because you can't afford to hire the best security people, the best, you know, uh, arm, um, chip designers, uh, you can't, you know. Th there's one actually in that other I came up with a bumper sticker, you guys talk about bumper sticker. I came up with that like last in a couple of weeks Innovation favors scale. They have scale, they have innovation. So that's where the innovation is, and, and it's, it's not there. Again, they, I usually say the market sets the price. Market, uh, you as a customer don't set the price. The vendor doesn't set the price, market sets the price. So if somebody's complaining about their margins or egress and all that, I think that's BS. Um, yeah, <laughs> I have a few more notes on the, the, the partners. You, 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 you concur with yeah, that? Yeah, Dave, you know, it, just coming back to some of this commentary about like, can Amazon actually enable something we used to call like community clouds? Uh, companies like, you know, Goldman and NASDAQ and the like where industries will actually be able to share data uh, and, you know, expand the usage and you know, Amazon's going to help drive that API economy forward some. So it's good to see those things because, you know, we all know, you know, all of us are smarter than just any uh, single company together. So again, some of that's open source, but some of that is, uh, you know, I, I think Amazon is, you know, allowing innovation to thrive I, I, some. I think the word you're looking for is super cloud there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, yeah, Dave, if you want to go there with the super cloud, well, because uh, it, you, you know, have it, the data. it is a metaphor for exactly what you described NASDAQ, Goldman Sachs, it, we, you know, and, and, and you know, a number of other companies that are doing things at the Berkeley Sky Computing Paper. Yeah. You know, that's a form of super cloud. Dave Linthicum calls it meta cloud. I, mean, yeah. I don't really care yeah, what you I, call I it. I mean, but. you know, I, I go back to the, the challenge we've been, you know, working at for decades is distributed architecture. You know, if you talk about AI architectures, you know, what lives in the cloud, what lives at the edge, where do we train things, where do we do inferences? Um, location should matter a lot less. Amazon, you know, I, I didn't hear a lot about it this show, but when they came out with like local zones and oh my gosh, out, you know, all the things that Amazon is building to push out to the edge and also enabling that technology and software and the partner ecosystem helps expand that and pull it in. It's no longer, uh, you know, Dave, it was Hotel California. All of the data eventually is going to end up in the public cloud and lock it in. It's like, I don't think that's going to be the case. We know that there will be so much data out at the edge Amazon absolutely is super important. Um, there, some of those examples we're giving, it's not necessarily multi-cloud, but there's collaboration happening. Like in the healthcare world, you know, universities and hospitals can all share what they're doing uh, regardless of you know, where they live. Well, Stephen Armstrong in the uh, analyst session did yeah. say that you know, we're going to talk about multi-cloud. We're not going to lead with it necessarily, <laughs> but we are going to actually talk about it and that's different to your point, Stu, than in the fullness of time, all the data will be in the cloud. That's a new narrative, but go ahead. Yeah, actually, Amazon is a leader in the cloud. So if they push the cloud, even if they don't say AWS or Amazon with it, they benefit from it, right? And, and the narrative is that way. Uh, there's, the, the proof is there, right? So again, innovation favors scale. There are chips which are being made for high scale. There's software being tweaked for high scale. You as a Bank of America or Ford or Chrysler, as a typical enterprise, you cannot afford to do those things in-house. What cloud providers can, I'm not saying just AWS, Google Cloud is there, Azure guys are there, and a few others who are behind them, and you guys are there as well. 
So IBM has, IBM, and by the way, congratulations to you are Red Hat, I know, but IBM won the award. Um, yeah, Global, Global Partner of the Year, we, 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 I saw we, that. we appreciate it. I saw yeah. that. I, mean, yeah. I, I was I, like, okay, yeah, sorry, Pete Wright, you know, very good partner, and <laughs> yeah, they, did, we, they okay, have 34 me, billion reasons, you. but yeah. People are dragging their feet, people usually do on the change, and they are in deni denial. They, they drag their feet and they cave in. IBM dragged their feet, they caved in. Dell dragged their feet, they cave in. You mean, as they, you mean by dragging feet as cloud deniers? Yeah, yeah, yeah cloud yeah. deniers, <laughs> right? So server huggers, I call them. But they, they, they actually are sitting in the Amazon cloud marketplace. Everybody's buying stuff from there. The marketplace is the new model. Okay, Amazon created the marketplace for B2C. They are leading the marketplace of B2B as well on the, the technology side, and other people are copying it. So there are multiple marketplaces now. So now actually, it's like if you're in, in, in um, uh, mobile app, app development, there are two main platforms, Android and Apple. You first write the application for Apple, right? Then for Android. Hey, same here, yeah. as a technology provider, as an, I, an, an ISV, you port your stuff to AWS first, then you go anywhere else. Yeah. So they are leaders, yeah. and they're so, winning. I, I guess the gotta say, I, I, yeah. I gotta go if, back. If the, the enterprise app store is what we've wanted for a long time. The question is, is Amazon alone the enterprise app store, or are they part of a, of a larger portfolio? Because there's um, a lot of yeah. SaaS companies out there uh, that, that, that play into yeah, what, what we need. The well, one, and this one, one, you're one. talking about the future, but I, I just want to make a point about the past. You're talking about right, dragging their go feet. Ahead, go ahead. Because in the Cube's been following this, and Stu, you remember this in 2013, IBM actually you know, got in a big fight with, with, with Amazon over the CIA deal. They, you know, and it all became public. Judge Wheeler eviscerated you know, IBM, and it ended up, IBM ended up buying you know, Softlayer, and then we know what happened there. And it, Joe Tucci thought the cloud was mosey, right? So it's just amazing to see, we, we have booksellers, you know, VMware called them booksellers, and now all of them <laughs> are like talking about how great partnerships they are. It's amazing, like you said, sub GC and IBM uh, with the, the GSI you know, partnership of the year. But what you guys were just talking about was the future, and that's what I wanted to get to, is because you know, Amazon's been leading the way I, I was listening to Werner this morning and it just reminded me of back in the days when we used to listen to IBM educate us, give us a master class on system design and decoupled systems and, and, and I.O. and everything else. Now Amazon is you know, the master educator. And it got me thinking, how long will that last? You know, will they go the way of you know, the other you know, incumbents? Will they be disrupted? Or will they you know, keep innovating? Maybe it's going to take 10 or 20 years, I don't know. Yeah, do so think? I mean, Dave, you actually, you did some research, uh, I believe it was a year or so ago, yeah, you but, know, what will stop yeah. Amazon? And <laughs> the one thing that worries me a little bit um, is the two pizza teams, when you have over 200 two pizza teams, the amount of things that each one of those groups needs to take care of was more than any human could take care of. People burn out, they run out of people. How many Amazonians only last two or three years and then leave because it is tough. I bumped into plenty of friends of mine that have been you know, six, 10 years at Amazon and love it, but it is a tough culture and they are driving. Werner's keynote, I thought, did look to, from a product standpoint, uh, you could say tape over some of the seams. Some of those uh, solutions to bring beyond just a single product and bring them together and leverage data. So there are some signs that they might be able to get past some of those limitations, but I still worry structurally, culturally, uh, there could be some challenges for Amazon to, to keep the momentum going, especially with the global economic impact that we are likely to see in the next year. I bring, think, bring us home. Bring, I think for the future home. side, like we could talk about the vendors all day, right? To, to serve the community out there, I think we should talk about how, what's the future of technology consumption from the consumer side. So from the supplier side, just a quick note, I, I think the only danger AWS has, has that, that uh, you know, Fed's going after them, you know, too big, you know, like it will break you up, and that can cause some disruption there. Uh, other than that, I think they, they have some more steam to go for a few more years at least before we start thinking about like, oh, this, this thing is falling apart or anything like that. So they have a lot more, they have momentum and it's continuing. So, okay, from the- I think Amazon retail, by the way, is going to get disrupted before AWS. Yeah. Go ahead, from carry the, on. From the buyer side, I think, um, the, the future of the sort of technology consumption is ba based on the you know, pay per 
uh, use, and they actually are turning all their services to, uh, they are sort of becoming serverless behind the scenes, right? All analytic service, the, they had one service left, they, they did that this year. So every service is serverless, so that means you pay exactly for the amount you, uh, you use the compute, the IOPS, the, the storage. So all these three layers, of course, network, we talked about the egress stuff, uh, that, that's a problem there because of the network design mainly, because Google has a flatter design and they have lower cost. So, so they are actually squeezing the, uh, they're, they're designing this, their services in a way that you don't waste any resources as a, as a buyer. So for, for example, very simple example, when in early, earlier in the cloud, you will get a VM, right, in cloud, that's how we started. So, and you can get, use 20% of the VM, 80% is getting wasted. That's not happening now, that, that has been reduced to the most extent. So now your VM grows as you grow the usage, and if you go higher than the tier you picked, they will charge you, otherwise they will not charge you extra. So that's why there's still a lot of instances, like many different types, you have to pick one. I think the future is that those instances will go away, the, the, the instance will be formed for you on the fly. So that is the future. Serverless is it. All right, yeah. give us a bumper sticker. Stu and then Sarbjeet, I'll give you my quick one and then we'll wrap. Yeah, so, so just Dave, to play off of Sarbjeet and to wrap it up, you actually wrote about it on your preview post for here. Uh, serverless, we're talking about how developers think about things um, and you know, Amazon in many ways you know, is the new default server uh, you know, for the cloud. Um, and containerization fits into the whole serverless paradigm. Uh, it's the space that I live in uh, you know, every day here, and uh, you know, I was happy to see the last few years, serverless and containers, there's a blurring a line. And, you know, Sarbjeet, we're still going to see VMs for a long time. Yeah, yeah, you know, we will see. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Give, we'll, us, we'll, give us we'll your bumper sticker. Happens. My yeah. bumper sticker is innovation favors scale. That's my bumper sticker, and, and Amazon has that. But also, I, I want everybody else to, like the, the viewers, to take a look at the, the Google Cloud as well, as well as IBM with others. Like, maybe you have a better price to performance there for certain workloads. And by the way, one vendor cannot do it alone. We know that for sure. The market is so big. There's a lot of room for uh, Red Hats of the world and, and, and Microsoft of the world to innovate. So keep an eye on them. They, we need the competition, actually. And that's why competition will keep us to a place where market sets the price, one vendor doesn't. So the only, only danger is if, if AWS is a monopoly, then I will be worried. I think ecosystems are the hallmark of a great cloud company and Amazon's got the, the biggest and baddest ecosystem. And I think the other thing to watch for is industries building on top of the cloud. You mentioned Goldman Sachs, NASDAQ, Capital One, Yep. Warner Media, all these, all these industries are building their own clouds and that's where the real money is going to be made in the latter half of the 2020s. All right, we're, we're a wrap. This is Dave Vellante. I want to first of all thank, thanks to our great sponsors, AWS, for, for having us here. This is our 10th year at theCUBE. AMD, you know, sponsoring as well the, 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 the Cube here. Accenture sponsored a third set upstairs, uh, upstairs on the fifth floor. All the ecosystem partners that came on theCUBE this week and supported our mission for free content. Our content is always free. We try to give more to the community and we, we take back. So go to thecube.net and you'll see all these videos. Go to siliconangle.com for all the news, wikibon.com, I publish weekly a breaking analysis series. I want to thank our amazing crew here. You guys, we have probably 30, 35 people. Unbelievable. Our, our awesome host, last session. John Walls, uh, <laughs> Paul Gillen, Lisa Martin, Savannah Peterson, John Furrier, who's on a plane. We appreciate Andrew and Leonard in our ear and all of our, our crew from Palo Alto, Boston, and across the country. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right, we are a wrap. AWS reInvent 2022. We'll see you in two weeks. We'll see you two weeks at Palo Alto Ignite back here in Vegas. Thanks for watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage.